Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we'll start in a couple of minutes once um, most of the attendees have joined. So hello everyone, thanks for joining this uh, webinar with Microchip and Mauser uh, entitled How to Easily Develop Cellular IoT Applications. Uh, it's great you can join us today. If anyone is not familiar with uh, Mauser, uh, we're a global distributor of the newest semiconductors and electronic components from over 1100 manufacturers, amongst which Microchip is a leading provider of smart, connected and secure embedded solutions. Currently, we have around 14,000 microchip parts in stock ready for delivery. So if you like what you see today, you are in a position to come to us and uh, build your own, so to speak. So before we get into the body of the uh, webinar, just some housekeeping. If you have any questions during the presentation, uh, please use the Q&A button below and we will answer as many as we can as, um, as we go uh, throughout the presentation. And at the end as well, there's a, if we have time, we'll, we'll continue to answer some of them, although we do hope Johan's hoping to do a live demo. So um, I'm sure you'll find that really interesting and useful. If you have any technical questions around audio or webinar functions, then please use the chat function and someone from the Mauser team will help you. So with that, uh, let me hand over to Johan, who's currently on mute and hopefully he's going to unmute. <laughs> Don't worry about that. And away we go. All right. Hey, everybody. So my name is uh, Johan. I am a senior applications engineer here for Microchip. Uh, I work a lot with IoT. And today I'm going to talk to you all about how uh, you can do cellular IoT development with our tools and, and products. So um, oh, let's see. There we go. So before we start, um, I always like to, to start this discussion with what are we actually talking about here? So what is cellular IT? So in, in pure simple terms, we're using the cellular IT network for, for IT applications. So basically connected these uh, small IT devices to the network, to a cloud or to whatever server you want and want to connect to using the cellular IT um, or the cellular network. There are two main standards out there today. It's LTM and MBIoT. Um, so the differences between these two, uh, there are, uh, quite huge differences in terms of there are two very different standards, uh, the bandwidth they operate and so on and so forth, but they are both designed to do the same thing, which is um, these uh, provide connectivity to these edge nodes. Um, so if you'd like to read more about that, there's a, a lot of resources uh, uh, online, but for the rule of thumb, um, you can probably see here on the map that if you want to do LTM, uh, that's mostly what's being used in the West. There is uh, also MBIT, but if you want to do it in Asia, um, it is almost exclusively MBIT. Um, so that was what is cellular IT, but why are you using cellular IT? So before we had cellular IT, um, if you want to connect your uh, edge node to the network uh, without LTM, 
you needed to use these quite power heavy standards. There was uh, expensive data plans. They were pretty much not built for uh, deploying a huge amount of devices like this. It was more built for, for instance, your mobile phone. Um, that is where LTM changes stuff. Uh, it has, for instance, power saving features built straight into it. And uh, the data plans offered by different uh, uh, providers and operators are, are built to scale um, largely uh, with more affordable data plans. Um, some example applications you can use Seller IT for is, for instance, asset tracking. Um, let's say you have a package and you're going to send it from somewhere in Europe to somewhere in America. And you want to know where it is at all, all, all the given time. Then you can, for instance, use the GPS and provide and upload the GPS coordinates using um, a Seller IT, IT connectivity. Or it can be as simple as a remote sensor node. You need to maybe measure the temperature at uh, um, some location, maybe if it's an industrial or, or consumer, um, and you want to maybe upload that to the cloud, then this would be a good solution. So what is our solution to all of this? So this is the AVR IT Cellular Mini. Uh, it's a development board for LTM. And uh, the main hardware components we have on this is um, a microcontroller. It's our AVR DB. Uh, it's 128K. Um, flash and a 48 pin variant. It has the ECC 608B, which is also from our serial microchip, which is a secure element. And you basically use this secure element to store your um, security keys, uh, which you need to connect to, for instance, if it's AWS or Azure or any of these uh, providers, uh, cellular providers and uh, cloud providers, you need this to be, to be secure. And finally, uh, our partners at Sequence, uh, they provided us the uh, Monarch 2. Uh, which is the actual cellular modem on this board. Um, again, one thing that this uh, is very much tailored for is these low powered edge nodes. We have tried to build low power straight into the board from the get-go, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. You can connect sensors to it uh, by using a um, something called a quick or stemma connector. It's this thing right here. Uh, it's a standard from Adafruit and SparkFun. Um, and, and they have a myriad of different connectors that you can connect to, it, uh, connect to it. If you're more familiar with clickboards from MicroE, you can still connect those, but you'll need an adapter. Um, the form factor of this is something we call a feather. That's also from the Adafruit ecosystem. Uh, what it basically allows you to do is to connect something called a feather wing. Um, so if so, those of you that maybe are familiar with Arduino is very similar to Arduino Shields. Um, in the box itself, you'll find the board, obviously. Uh, you'll find a little uh, antenna. And you'll find a SIM card from our partners at Trufon. So this SIM card um, gives you a 90-day free trial and 150 megabytes. Um, so before we continue, uh, one of the big questions I always get is, um, cellular IT, OK, but then I need a SIM card. And that's true. And that can be re actually really difficult because um, if you want to have your product operate in multiple countries, uh, multiple countries and multiple regions have different, um, different operators. So how do you kind of merge all of this to one solution? And that's where uh, a company like Trufin comes in. So they uh, provide uh, one SIM card and they have deals with all these different operators. So it should work seamlessly in all the countries that they have uh, available. Um, in terms of other stuff on the board, uh, not to go too much into detail, there's a couple sensors. There is a temperature sensor from us. Um, there is um, a color sensor on the board. Um, there is a power supply and battery charging. So if you see up on the right hand corner here, there's actually a battery connector. And there is also a battery charging circuitry on it. And as with all our products, uh, we also supply a debugger, that's the one right here. So you don't need an external uh, debugger to work with the, the board. Yeah, and just a second, just a couple mm -hmm. of questions come in. I think you've answered one of them, which is, is the battery charger built in? And you've mentioned that that's yep. on the board. Um, and also a couple of people asking if we can get the slides. And uh, what you'll get is an on-demand version of the webinar that will be available to you. So you'll be able to uh, access the information um, wh whenever you like, basically, or share with colleagues. All right. Okay, thanks. Um, 
Moving on then. So a bit on the positioning on this board. What are we trying to do with this board? And one of our goals is to be the easiest seller development board out there. A seller development board can be notoriously difficult because you're uh, not only dealing with a um, something that's wireless and not only wireless cellular, uh, but you also need to work with the low level, that is the embedded code, for instance, in the microcontroller, and at the same time being able to deal with this uh, quite complicated cryptography to get it up to, uh, for instance, AWS. Um, we have robust, low power and secure. That is one of our slogans when it comes to IoT, and we stand by that. Um, so, for instance, secure is our ECC. Low power um, is uh, that the entire board is built upon low power, uh, and robust is, is our products in general. Um, it is uh, quite affordable. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the retail price is at Master at the moment, but at least it's uh, uh, mostly around $60 uh, to, to get it. Um, we also have some other um, tools to reduce the barrier to entry to cellular IT. Uh, we have, for instance, Arena support. Uh, we have a very accessible documentation and we aim to make that very modern. And we have a ready to use library that uh, should be quite easy to use and plug and play um, directly. Johan, sorry yeah. to jump in again. No worries. <laughs> a couple of questions. Um, and I don't know uh, about these really, but it, is there a reason the AVR was chosen as opposed to PIC 18 LF or PIC 24 LF? Um, Yes and no. Um, so this is one of the AVR IT uh, lineup. So we have used a PIC16 in the past. Um, this, uh, th the particular reason for choosing this AVR is that uh, in order to, to fit a lot of these cellular stacks um, or network stacks on, onto the board, uh, we needed uh, quite a bit of, of, of flash. Um, and that's why we have this 128K variant. You could do probably the same design with, with, with other uh, boards, but um, there's no, that is the primary reason. Uh, another reason is uh, the AVR DB um, has a new feature which we call multi voltage IO. And that is basically that even though the board itself runs on 3.3 volts, I believe the sequence module runs on 1.8 volts. So with this multi voltage IO, you can actually, you don't need a lever shifter. You can just con communicate with it directly uh, without having to. Uh, to add that level shifter on it because it's right. basically built into the part. Yeah, nice. Couple more questions. Um, I'm just conscious that we'll need to move on, but um, somebody's asking, uh, can it be connected to a Linux system such as Pi or BeagleBone through USB or pin headers? Um, so it can be connected to uh, any Linux system. All of our tools are compatible with, the, with, the, with Linux. Um, so, I'm not familiar with those other terms you just used. Um, but for instance, if you want to program the board, as I said, it has Arduino support. So Arduino is yeah. compatible with that. Or if you want to plug it into Amplabex, we also have a Linux version of Amplabex. Yeah. Uh, and the last one before we move on, is there an option with um, fallback to 2G slash 3G in case of unavailability of NBIoT or LTE? Um, I don't believe so, not for this particular one, but that is a question I would uh, uh, direct to Sequence um, yeah. because um, I'm not uh, an expert on the module. Sequence slash true phone, I guess. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's move on. We'll come back to the other questions at the end. Absolutely. So just quickly talking about this red to use library, as, um, what, what, what are we talking about here? So it is available on GitHub. You can see the link uh, right there. It's on our Microsoft Picking and VR solution, Solutions uh, page. Um, so we have, uh, as I said, uh, Arduino support. So the Arduino IDE is, um, if you download it and install this library into it, it'll show up and work as any other Arduino board. Uh, and it's also supported in Amplabex using something called the Sketch Importer to import this library. Um, in terms of cloud support, at the moment we support AWS, and something that we have labeled self-hosted. And self-hosted is just that you don't use any cloud providers. Maybe you have a MQTT broker um, hosted yourself. Um, in order to enable this Arduino compatibility, we're using something called an, a core. Um, it's called a DX core. Um, and that's what basically connects um, the, in all of the Arduino functionality to, to, uh, to the AVR itself. 
Uh, and when I say fully featured, just what I mean by that, we have LTE connectivity drivers, we have HTTP driver, HTTPS driver, MQTT, low power, and a couple more. Um, we also wanted to make it easy to use. So we have this entire onboarding procedure. So I have this slide, but I thought I might as well just show you. So to show you that I'm not lying, I have this board here. And let's see if I can open here. If I connect this like so, you see it's a little bit drive here called Curiosity. And if you double click on this click me link, it'll take you to this page. It'll tell you how to, for instance, prepare the hardware, um, cut, uh, yeah, make sure that the SIM card is inserted and so on and so forth. Uh, it wants that the antenna is connected properly um, and um, that basically all of the, the hardware preparation is done. Uh, and as I said, there is a, a SIM card in the box and you need to activate this to work. It's on the back side of the board. Um, so you need to activate that with, with true phone beforehand. Um, then you upgrade the firmware. So I can just click on this download latest text. I can open that and I just drag and drop it over to this drive. And it'll, boom, there we go, board's program. Um, and then finally, connecting to the network. Um, there is a couple LEDs that tells you how connected you are. Um, and mine should be all the way connected. To verify that everything is working, you get with this uh, board interaction page. Um, if I click start sen uh, sensor data, I click and see here that we have the two sensors on the board. So I'll block out the board and boom, you can see that the light intensity drops. And if I unblock it, you can see that it uh, bounces back up. And this is just kind of to illustrate that we are actually having connectivity here. We are not just making a simulation or making a claim. This isn't, your board is actually connected to, to AWS. And then you can turn on, on and off some LEDs and, and play around with it before you finally you're prompted to go to the documentation, which I'll come back to. Um, yeah. Um, as I said, we have a quite an extensive documentation on it.com slash docs. Um, we have user guides for all the software modules, for the, all of the hardware. We have API references, tool walkthroughs, and more. And we have also multiple demos, um, which all features uh, like application notes and videos and so on and so forth. This is one of the examples we have is a GPS tracker. Um, you can find it on the, on the website. Um, and what we basically did here, we uh, to utilize the feather footprint as I was talking so much about, we took this little, uh, let me see if I can get the, uh, no, not the pen, the laser pointer. This little thing right here, connected it to it, uh, hooked up a battery just straight into the port. Um, and then, uh, we uploaded this um, GPS information to AWS and then used a open um, map uh, API to map all of it. So you can see people have been driving around in the car here on the map down here around the, the our office here in, in Norway. Um, and that's also a, a great example of how we're using low power um, as obviously if you want to have these kind of tracking applications, you can't have it run all the time because uh, cellular IT is quite power, uh, power intensive when you're actually enabling the um, connectivity. Um, so yeah, uh, the other unit firmware supports something called PSM and power off. Uh, PSM is, um, stands for power save mode. Uh, it is one of the built-in features in LTM. Uh, I won't go too much into detail um, right now about what specifically it does, but in short, it negotiates with the network when it should be online, when it should be offline, and it goes into sleep automatically based on that. Um, we also um, then <clears throat> on the board itself, put all the peripherals and everything into deep sleep to try to minimize the amount of current that we draw. And to do that, one of the uh, uh, components we have is a, uh, a power supply from, from us, uh, which supports both LDO and PWM mode. So we use the LDO mode while we sleep and PWM when we're active. Uh, and then obviously, as I've already, already mentioned, we have this uh, battery controller and um, that charges the battery through the on, on board USB. And this is actually something that's quite cool with this board because it has already an onboard USB 
and it has a uh, a battery output. If you just put this into a box and exposes the uh, expose the USB port, then you basically have a battery chargeable application uh, just there and then. So a little demo then. Is there any questions before we uh, move on? I think you're on mute. There are many. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um let's let's start with the sim card because um there's a couple of questions on the on the sim mm -hmm. and um should be fairly straightforward you embedded an open eSIM have you embedded an open eSIM card or is it fixed with only true phone as the operator you can use any operator as you want uh okay. we provide true phone in the box um to for an easy to um like get, a, yeah get yeah. started experience get started but if you want yeah. to use something else it's up to you when it comes to on the back side, there is if you want an uh, eSIM IC, it's not on. It's we have a footprint for it, so you have to solder it on yourself. Yeah. Uh, but there is a physical card holder for a physical SIM card. Yeah, I guess the thing is they're disappearing over time, aren't they? But currently, yeah. it's shipping with a physical SIM card. Then. Hmm. Okay, because there's another question saying, can we get this without the SIM card and provide our own? I think you've got your answer there, yeah. uh, which is. Um, it will ship with the SIM card, but of course you could plug your own in rather than the than the true phone one. Okay, so um, uh, here's a little more in depth here about cross platform. How easy um, is it to um, connect to web apps for Android and Apple? Have you developed any API that allows uh, this to happen? How easy is it to connect to the different web platforms such as iOS and Android? So. Yeah, essentially, can you connect up using an API to iOS and Android? Um, I'm a little uncertain about the question here because iOS and Android are both operating systems running on a mm -hmm. phone. So uh, what we are providing is connectivity to the cloud. So if you yeah, want to yeah. send some information down to an Android device or an iOS device, that, that will have to be done through the cloud while you yeah. can use uh, this board to... Um, to connect to the cloud or whatever server you want to do. Like mm -hmm. we have HTTP and HTTPS support. So if this is a REST API that, that either Google or, or Apple provides, then there's nothing that stops you from using those APIs directly off the board. Yeah, I think, I th I think in summary, what you're saying is if this device is sending data to the cloud, then it's entirely feasible to pick it up on an uh, iOS or Android yes, device. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so that's kind of yeah. the beauty about this. As soon as you get the data to the cloud, then you then you're set, right? Because then the data is is available for for you. Yeah, a couple of questions about the antenna, Johan. So first mm -hmm. of all, what kind of antenna is it? Who's made it? You got a spec uh, it. This is a Molex antenna. Uh, I uh, I don't know too much about antennas. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> if you go to the product page, it'll tell you what it is. That being said, it's just a normal antenna connector. Um, you can see it actually on the uh, on the board here, uh, yeah. all the way on the bottom you're right here. Yeah. You can connect whatever you want uh, of antennas. Um, and I believe in the Harvard user guide that we have, if you go to the documentation page, user guide and Harvard user guide, uh, I believe there is some comments about uh, Probably about a bill, bill of materials too, is there, I imagine? Yeah, so, so here's the external antenna. Included with the development board is a flexible antenna with a UFL connector from Molex. Yeah, and then which uh, antenna is suitable yeah. for. If you want more specific information about that, you can always go to uh, Sequence's um, uh, website. Uh, they have more information about that. Just hold it there because uh, there's another question also asking what's the frequency band of the antenna? And mm -hmm. uh, you can see that there in black yeah. and white. And that person is also asking, can we link to private network which is not cellular, but not not with a cellular modem, I don't think. I, I, I don't think I understand the question. I, I, I guess uh, in the same way as we're seeing it come with 5G, where we've got private networks being set up. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Uh, that's something you'll have to take uh, up with, with, with TrueFone. Um, as long as any of these operators support that, the... Uh, the board itself shouldn't yep. it shouldn't discriminate on it. Yeah, if you if your if your network conforms to the standard, then uh, there should be a way of connecting to it. Yeah. Quite okay. Let's show that one is answered. 
Um, so that's the questions on the antenna. What else have we got here? Um, also one around RTOS. Do you have free RTOS support? Uh, we So at the moment, no. We're, we are looking into expanding the uh, the board with uh, additional features as, as we go on, especially uh, in, in Ampelabex. But at the moment, no, we don't have any free Arco support. Okay. I believe, though, that the AVRDB has a free Arco support out of the box. Uh, you'll have to go to free Arco's webpage to see if it is in or on their GitHub to see if the, uh, if the device is, is in there. I believe so. Uh, so in that case, you can just um, uh, use it. But uh, we haven't provided any um, what can I say, out of the box library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. um, couple of other things more on, uh, and I guess you, you touched on this a couple of times on power consumption and sleep modes and so on, but these are more sort of general questions mm. than detailed. And it's about power consumption during cellular uh, connectivity and power consumption when sleeping. Uh, I guess yeah. there may be some, uh, we may be looking at it right now, I guess. In the so, uh, this, yeah, this is this is sensors. I don't yeah. know if in this Harvard user guide we have because it's heavily heavily dependent on the firmware. Mm. So I think uh, I can probably dig that up. But for instance, for the GPS tracker, I do believe we have some graphs down here. This is for the GPS tracker specifically. Yeah. So without too much optimization on this. Uh, we managed to get an average of about, um, so when you select an average of 18.5 milliamps, but you can see here that it peaks when it's in use of around 120 milliamps and it sleeps at, uh, I know it's quite low, uh, probably like a couple of milliamps. Is that milliamps? Yeah, mil yeah at... this is all milliamps. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's not going scale that much. But yeah, that, it's somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's that's answered both yeah, of those. And you can always go to the data sheet, of, for instance, of the microcontroller. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll have all the data there of, of the actual um, power draw um, of, of the module itself. And you can always go to Sequence's website, uh, website um, and download the data sheet for, uh, for their module, which will yeah. also tell you all this information. I think there's a... Uh... There's a system view to be taken, isn't there, really, when you look at you know what's on the board yeah. and the different factors regarding uh, power consumption over the, the sort of operating cycle of the device um, or the node. So that's the, um, the power ones. Um, interesting one about, again, back to the system solution. And I guess the answer to this is yes, but it's just whether you've got any experience of it. Are there any kind of displays that can be connected, such as a small TFT or touchscreen? Um, why not? I mean, in principle, yes. Yeah. Right? If, if you have anything that uh, a lot of these screens, like you can find relatively inexpensive uh, uh, SDU screens that uh, run on, on, I don't know, uh, I2C or uh, SBI yeah. or something, right? Yeah, you... exactly. Exactly, yeah. Um, then, um, <laughs> I'm not sure you'll be able to answer this, but you can try and we can certainly, um, follow up in writing, uh, a little bit of a thorny question. I think lots of people have challenges with this, that there, there's a, a company have developed a prototype using microchip, but they're struggling with some component availability. Mm -hmm. And uh, a general comment, I think it's difficult to comment generally on these things. What's the supply situation for for components and i guess it varies by component type yeah i i can't be i can't comment on 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 unavailability of our components that we'll have to take up with our sales team yeah i think if you look at um across what's on the board here i think i looked and found the the ldo was currently uh, you know we're currently waiting for an ldo for the ldo to come into stock but everything mm -hmm. else is in stock so I think my top level guidance for people would be it's an improving situation. We're seeing a lot of parts from lots of manufacturers coming back into stock now. So so keep checking. And um, as ever, I think the advice is always you need um, you need to be in it to win it. So if you need the part, place the order and try and expedite the order through your distribution channel. And certainly Moza will help you do that. 
Um, a question on running costs as well. Again, this might be, this is more perhaps more of a question for the network operators, um, mm -hmm. people like Truephone. How high are the running costs, for example, per megabyte? Oh, uh, that, yeah, you have, uh, Truephone has a, 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 an overview of all their plans and how much it costs. From the top of my head, uh, if you want like a five megabyte uh, plan, that's the cheapest they have. I think it's a euro or two, something like that. I can't, I, I, I yeah. don't recall that. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it is on Truefund's uh, website. Uh, it has all their plans. Right. And shortly, we hope um, we'll be able to offer Truefund through Mouser as well. So you'll be able to see in a very transparent way, you know, what you're buying in terms of a uh, data package and over what period of time it's available. Um, I think most of these data packages are year yearly. Yeah. 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 Uh, what else have we got? Oh, does the device, and I guess this is the board, mm -hmm. um, does the device have any hardware logic such as an on-chip programmable logic? Well, I guess the AVR in itself is. Yeah. But, but what else are you, what else? Um, I'm not sure. What um, yeah, so, so, so the board itself is the sign that you should program the, um, that the, the the AVR is what yeah. you program. You program your application code on the AVR, and that takes care, Tarek, you know, takes care of everything else. Um, and in order to program that, um, uh, we have a debugger, which is also a programmer. So you can just program it through USB. Um, again, one on one on coverage here, but I think perhaps the GSMA website you pointed out at the start was is probably yeah. the best place to go. But um, um, what about um, the coverage? Can I use it in a country like Burkina Faso or Ivory Coast? Or do, do I need some adaptation modules? I mean, it really depends what networks are available, right? Yeah, so if we look at, um, let's see, on Truefond's page here, coverage. And then we do features, LPM. And then we do map, there we go. So these are what Truefun currently provides. Obviously, um, there are different operators and you'll have to check in your region to figure out what um, kind of operator you want to use. Um, so if there's, yeah, that's the best answer I can get, give really. Uh, it's very, very dependent on where you are in the world. Yeah, and, and like you say, what's the prevailing network? Who are the network providers? And I think that, um, that is one of the challenges that's become easier as um, yep. the, the sort of the, the there's become that sort of clear picture of where LTM and where MBIOT is prevalent, and there have been some great operators like network operators like Truephone coming to market with a very clear um, offer. So it's an improving and and um, a, a picture that's becoming more simple, I think, as we uh, as things develop. Um, one on um, security, which are, of course connected board here. So there's a lot of questions around security and we certainly see lots of questions on this. Uh -huh. uh, what cyber security provisions are included? How is CS demonstrated to protect equipment or networks connected to the IOT board? And I think this is really a pointer at the um, ECC 608. Yes, it is. So the ECC 608, the I can, oops, uh, if I just, uh, this one, I think the product page explains it quite well. Uh, it is basically a, what we call a secure element. It holds your keys and it does, um, and it uses <laughs> different uh, protocols to, to, to do the exchange and, uh, and to generate these keys. Um, in it for more in depth about it, I would recommend reading the data sheet. I'm not a, uh, an expert in this particular part. Uh, but how the board itself uses it is that all the authentication, all the signing that's happening before you connect to uh, AWS directly is done on this part. And this part has a lot of built-in hardware security uh, features such as tamper protection. So if you try to decap it, it has a lot of a lot of built-in features um, to, to prevent you from getting out those keys. That is kind of the goal with one of these boards. If you have your private key on that, it stays on that, on that, on that IC, you won't be able to extract it. Right, right, yeah. And which is, I guess, a, a fairly, um, you know, 
uh, belt and braces kind of approach. It needs to be yep. it needs to be secure from a physical uh, perspective as well as a, um, a firmware perspective. And um, certainly, I would recommend that you know go to Microchip and talk to them about what this you know what the implementation of this looks like. But really, it's about encryption and authentication. I think would be the two the yes. two principles that this uh, this question is getting at. Um, we answered the coverage question, and then there's a question also about bandwidth. This, and there's one or two others then about some of the um, the connectivity. But hopefully, we've covered them throughout the presentation. But let's see if we get time. Mm -hmm. um, bandwidth in megabits per second, but I guess that's a network function again, rather than a board function per se. Yeah, it's also dependent on if it's MBRT or um, LTM. LTM right. has a bit higher bandwidth in MBRT. Uh, um, so I don't recall it at the top of my head, unfortunately, uh, but uh, it, it is part of the standard. And um, this board doesn't, um, because we're using the sequence module, which is uh, yeah. quite a, 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 a powerful module, um, it, should, it confirms to that spec yeah, entirely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think also um, when you think about the applications that we're talking about here, which is sort of um, sensor nodes, asset tracking and so on, then the bandwidth will be uh, more than sufficient, I think, using LTEM or MBIoT. Yeah, if you're if you you won't be streaming video on this. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm yeah. thinking. If you were, you'd you'd probably want a different um different connectivity solution. Yeah. Uh, we've answered that about um connectivity a, a couple of others that and uh, um forgive the questions if you've covered this off but just uh recap about you, you mentioned the libraries earlier um mm -hmm. and whether it can be used in mp uh, a question whether it can be used in mp lab x which i guess is the microchip tool most people know. yes so so this is this is amply back so you can see the board pops up perfectly fine uh in order to use the library specifically you need a plugin and it's called a, um, let's see if I've installed it, maybe not, um, importer. Um, it's, I can't recall the name. It's, I think it's called Sketch Importer. Uh, I don't think uh, I have the newest version of Ampelab uh, where it's available, but it's basically called an Arduino Sketch Importer. Uh, and if you use that, you can import it directly into your, um, into your um, Ampelab X installation. Right. Apologies for not, yeah, I, don't, I think it's only available in the newest IDE version, which I don't have installed on my laptop. Right. <laughs> um, we've talked about SIM cards. So there's another question about needing, whether I need a SIM card, and if so, can I use any? So I think we've covered that. It mm -hmm. ships with TrueFone, but essentially, you know, if you know of, uh, should we say other network providers are available if, um, if you so choose. Um, Another question to the library about space in terms of RAM and flash, how much does the library take? Uh, good question. I think if you just do the base example, I can actually show it right here. So um, if we can look at the Arduino library in itself, um, we can do files, examples, um, let's do AVRT cellular and do HTTP. That's a good little example. Um, or actually, let's do the uh, changing my mind the last second here. The get time example. Um, we can also just really touch on uh, you can if you want to use Arduino IDE, if you want to use VS Code, if you want to implement X, that, that uh, all of them will work. Um, so um, this particular example, just to give you um, an overview of actually what the library does, um, you can see here in the setup function, L. Um, start uh, just a um, serial output. It'll then do lte.begin to connect to the operator. Uh, it'll print out when it's connected. It'll then configure a HTTP client to connect to this uh, world time API.org actually to try to get um, the current time. Um, and then we do a get request. You can see that HTTP client.get on slash API slash time so slash Europe slash Oslo. Um, we check that the status is okay. And then we print out what the current time is. So this is just a simple sketch showing how do you get HTTP connectivity? No cloud, no fancy, just pure HTTP connectivity. 
Yeah. And if we have that one, let's verify it. Uh, finding sketch. We see that we use about 16K flash and about 5K of RAM. Right. Yeah. So since it's 128K flash device, it's, it's quite a lot left for your application code. Yeah, indeed. And also, I guess we can. Let's, let's, let's be. Uh, oh. Yeah. It should. Um, since there's some error with my tool chain, <laughs> of course, doing a live demo. The perils, the perils of live demos. It worked yeah. perfectly in rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question around the the cellular module, and again, it might not be something we can answer, but um, can the firmware of the cellular module uh, be updated over over the built-in USB connector? Uh, yes. Um, it can. Okay. So we have a tool. So if we go back to our um, documentation site. Um, if you go to user guide, it's actually on the cloud provisioning for AWS. Um, so we have released this part of the tool, but we haven't released the documentation yet, and it's coming uh, very soon. Uh, but we have a tool called the IT provisioning tool. And this is just a, a, a little binary, a little Python file um, that uh, is used to provision the board. So you can use it that as one of the things you said, you can use it to upgrade the onboard um, sequence. And I think that is as uh, simple as, yeah, doing this actually. You run this tool and you do uh, skin, pi sequence, upgrade full. Right. And uh, I think if I run this, it'll probably gonna say you're already, yeah, you're previously yeah, performing a full system upgrade. So this will actually, um, yeah, upgrade skipped, but that's up, all you have up, to do. You're up to date. Yeah. You're up to date, yeah. Okay, good, that looks, that looks very straightforward. So hopefully yeah. that's, a good, um, that's a good answer for a question. So we'll come up, that one is done. Um, we've talked about MBIOT and LTEM, mm -hmm. um, and the fact that sequence because uh, the question is essentially, can I use MBIOT or is it LTEM only? And I think yeah. you mentioned sequence don't yet support. Um, yeah, MBIOT. so the, the module itself, the hardware supports yeah. MBIOT. Yeah. But until sequence has released a firmware for uh, MBIOT, um, it doesn't support it, right? Um, so they'll have to speak for that. But as soon as they do so, we will upgrade all our tools and right. examples to work with it. Yeah. Um, finally, I think, because we've answered the question about uh, bandwidth, uh, one on HTTPS, and I think mm. you, you mentioned this earlier, but essentially, uh, you know, what does it take to to use HTTPS? Yeah, so then, then we're suddenly adding the, um, the security here, right? The, the, uh, the SSL um, yeah. or TLS. Um, so if we go to HTTP user guide, and again, I will encourage everybody that uses this board to use this, this documentation site extensively. Um, it says here that using HTTP requires a security profile to be set up on the board. This only has to be done. So it only has to be done once. Uh, run the example called HTTP configure CA from the Arduino ID. Um, and that is CA is certificate authority. So for those of you that are familiar with X509, you'll know what I'm talking about. For everybody else, just run, <laughs> run, run the sketch, and you'll be happy. Um, so we can find it right here, and then it is this configure CA. Um, so if my tool stream was working, I could have just run this, and it would have worked. Uh, but it will basically set up the security profile, and yeah. HTTPS should be working uh, just fine. Yep. Very good. Great answer. Thank you. Um, that's it. That's all the questions I have. I have to say that's probably the most prolific set of questions. Ah, <laughs> sorry, one more coming in. Um, right. Again, it's about private networks. Can we use private point-to-point -point link without cellular modem? And can we update security to IPv6? Um, that, so the entire secure uh, network stack. Um, so 
uh, if it's HTTP, MQTT, or TCP IP, uh, and so on and so forth, is running on the sequence module itself. So um, if the sequence module supports it, the board supports it. Right. I don't personally know just at the top of my head if that's possible, uh, but I would assume so, because as long as you have TCP, uh, if you have TCP access, then you should be able to, mm. to make it work. Um, but yeah, um, you'll have to look into the data sheet. So it's a, it's a question of investigating what the sequence module is, is capable of then? Yes, and also you probably talk to Trufon. This is a discussion uh, you probably want to have with when it comes to these connectivity questions um, and not related to the solution itself and to, to the microcontroller and the microchip parts. I think yeah. having that discussion with sequence and Trufon is, is the, the best approach because they're okay. the experts in that field. Right, right, very good. Um, then that's it. I have mm -hmm. to say, uh, great session. <laughs> Almost that's it. Yeah. De debug mode is possible for the cellular module? Question mark. Is so? Is debug mode possible for the cellular yeah. module? It depends on what you mean by debug mode. But we'll go to, go into debug here, and then we have debugging overview. Um, you see, we have this little AT commands, right? Yeah. Here's all yeah. the AT commands. Yeah. And if you want to run the edge commands directly on it, you have two options. You can either download this UR bridge, and that should be as simple as um, actually. If I mean, let's let's try this. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second. Can I do that? Um, one moment. Yeah. Just have to open Chrome. Talk amongst yourselves, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, share screen. All right, so if I now go to serial terminal, so what I just did is I I downloaded this your bridge, which we can find here, and I dragged and dropped it over here. This is our drag and drop programming. Um, so now this hex file is programmed, and if I connect the board here, you see you have 80 commands. So I think this is the one. No, that didn't work. It's something like this, yeah, at least. Uh, it should be, um, or I have to connect it first, the 80. That's the 80 commands for connecting the board. Obviously, you don't have to do this if you don't want to go down to this low level. The, the, the library does all this for you. But if you want to do this kind of low level um, connection, um then feel free to do so and you can use our serial terminal in the, in the browser if right. you're on um chrome so yeah, you see it's getting a response i see that very good johan thanks we have to leave it there um so the questions um i guess we've answered them all kind of in within the uh within the webinar so feel free to um access the, the webinar on demand and certainly to share with colleagues if you feel it will be of interest to them. Uh, thanks again, Johan. Uh, great, uh, a great uh, session there. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, everything's available on demand. And finally, there will be a short survey coming up. Um, we'd be grateful if people could provide some feedback um, and give us a chance to improve even further the webinars for um, the rest of uh, the rest of what's to come. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. Thank you, everyone.